Hello and welcome back to Bookish. Today I wanted to do uh, the second video in my series of videos about Ernest Hemingway and in this one I kind of wanted to uh, talk about Hemingway's reputation and just kind of focus on Hemingway as a man because it seems to me that a lot of critics who have a problem with Hemingway focus on their dislike of Hemingway himself. But it is important to remember that Hemingway was a man of his time. It is somewhat unfair uh, to judge people from the past based on standards uh, that we have today. One of the great things about progress is that we've moved on from those things and we can raise generations of children and be part of generations of people who abandon those old ideas. But I'm not sure that gives us the right to look back on people of the past and decide that they were not good people uh, in every way because of what they believed. Certainly their beliefs were not good and certainly they were wrong to believe those things, but those are things that, that came somewhat as a byproduct of the time period in which they lived. In this video, I wanted to kind of deal head on with, I think, what are a lot of the major charges against Hemingway. Hemingway the person, uh, not necessarily Hemingway the writer. So that's why I've titled this video, Ernest Hemingway Part Two, Bastard, because I think Hemingway was in lots of ways a real bastard. He was not a particularly nice person. Um, and so I want to go through the things that people commonly say, or critics of Hemingway commonly say about, about him. Number one, uh, the charge is that Hemingway was a sexist. Hemingway was definitely a womanizer. Uh, he definitely cheated on his wives. He definitely often saw women in terms of sexual conquests. And that, I think, qualifies him as a sexist. I would just point out that Hemingway did frequently consult, create friendship relationships and romantic relationships with women who were anything but meek and mild and retiring women. Um, his uh, friendship with Gertrude Stein and her early mentorship of his career is an example of Hemingway being attracted in a way to a strong uh, female figure. I'm going to do a video, I think, which probably will be one of the shorter ones about Hemingway and women later on. So I'm not trying to say that Hemingway wasn't a sexist and that that sexism didn't lead over into his writing, but I do think there's a lot more nuance there uh, than might be assumed. A second charge against Hemingway would be that he was a racist, that he was a homophobe, or we can just shorten that and say that he was a bigot. I don't think there's any doubt that this is true, but again, I would go back to saying he was raised at a time period and he grew up and lived in a time period in which these were fairly commonly held ideas. While it would be nice to think that he had he could rise above those things and he could move beyond those things, he didn't, um, as you know most people uh, didn't. A third charge against Hemingway is that he was warmongering, that he glorified war. And I really think this is the most unfair of those charges. Hemingway was an outspoken critic of war and a clear believer that modern warfare left very little uh, opportunity for honor or glory on the battlefield. This doesn't mean that he didn't glorify the actions of brave men and brave individuals under trying circumstances, his definition of courage being grace under pressure. And I do think that he admired and glorified individuals who behaved in that way. Then I think a more general uh, criticism of Hemingway, my number four thing I think, would be just kind of the he-man machoism, the he-man writer persona he created. Of all the criticisms of Hemingway, I think this is probably the most fair um, and I think it's probably the one that for him did him the most damage and the most damage to his work. I'll talk more about this um, um, later on, but Hemingway kind of created this aura about himself that he was the prototypical He-Man writer, you know, the hard drinking drinker, the guy who was willing to get in a fight and brawl, uh, the man who chased and loved women and this kind of hard living idea that we have of writers is largely a creation of Hemingway and it was a creation that I think almost anybody would tell you destroyed Hemingway the man and long before that Hemingway the writer. Uh, a fifth criticism of Hemingway would be that he was egotistical and again I would say yes he had a tremendous ego, a bloated sense of his own importance as a writer but again I would ask you know what artist who achieves fame and success and critical acclaim doesn't. Uh, the, Hemingway isn't the isn't an exception to that rule. He may just be it may just be that he was the most famous 
of those kinds of people, and it may also be that he sought that kind of fame more than any others. Another kind of common criticism of Hemingway that makes him, I think, in many people's minds a bastard was his relationship or his treatment of animals in which I think people would just generally view Hemingway as being someone who is guilty of animal cruelty. Um, in the case of bullfighting and his, and his promotion of bullfighting, absolutely, I think that's true. Enough. But in terms of hunting, and he certainly did hunt, and he certainly did fish, and he was a trophy hunter, and he was a trophy fisherman, which are not things that, that I particularly appreciate, I would just point out again that Hemingway was raised in a home where hunting and fishing were common. This is what he and his family did on vacation. And his father was a hunter and a fisherman. And this is just something that Hemingway saw as a, as a regular part of his life. And then I think the seventh thing about Hemingway that people often just um, say is that he was just a bad person. And again, I, I won't argue with this. Um, he was petty. He was vindictive. He was haughty. He was judgmental. He was jealous of other writers and other people in his life. He was treacherous to his friends. He was a hypocrite. He was a self-promoter. All these things about Hemingway are true. So I hope in, do, in talking about those things, you, you understand that I accept that Hemingway was not a very good person. Uh, I think it's completely fair to say that Hemingway grow, be, failed to grow beyond the attitudes and the ideas, the time period in which he lived and, and the world in which he grew up. I think it's completely fair to say that Hemingway engaged in egotistical image-making behavior uh, that he created, uh, this kind of bloated sense of his own uh, self-importance. He created this He-Man image of the writer, which is destructive to generations of writers who came after him and in his own personal life. And I think it's certainly fair to say that Hemingway was petty and cruel and egotistical and uh, self-deluded and that some of those and a sexist and that some of those ideas must have crept into his writing. My problem with all of this is and all this discussion of Hemingway is was he really worse than other writers and other men and other artists of his generation? Is he really worse than Picasso, Jackson Pollock, uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald? Or do we see Hemingway uh, as being worse because he was the most famous? That he was the writer, artist around whom kind of a whole cult of personality was created. And if we only revile uh, Hemingway more, if we only criticize Hemingway more than these other writers and creative people, because he's more famous, then it seems even worse to me that so many people refuse to extend any amount of compassion or empathy uh, to Ernest Hemingway. One of the things critics and biographers seem to delight in is the idea of exposing Hemingway uh, as being homosexual or, or bisexual for purposes of tearing him down. Um, to me, this just seems completely wrong-headed. If, um, as they seem to be claim, claiming, which is, I think, entirely possible, um, if Hemingway was struggling uh, with sublimated homosexuality and sublimated homosexual tendencies and ideas, it seems cruel to me then for his critics who don't like him for being a He-Man to kind of dance on his grave and say, you know, almost the equivalent of, ha ha ha, look at the big He-Man, he was actually gay. This almost makes it seem like they think that, that Hemingway's if Hemingway was uh, homosexual. This almost makes it seem like they're saying that Hemingway's homosexuality was wrong, that he didn't get to be gay uh, because he acted such a tough guy. This, I think, lacks compassion. Would we say this about anyone in American society, living in American society today? Uh, and if we, and as I think it's we blessedly do, accept a greater, or, or accept um, the LGBT community, why do we, why do critics feel free to use this aspect, this potential aspect of Hemingway's life to tear him down and to kind of delight and enjoy the idea uh, of destroying his reputation based on that? That just seems wrong to me. Uh, if Hemingway was in fact gay, if he was dealing with uh, homosexual tendencies that were sublimated, this must have been incredibly emotionally painful for him. Um, and I think that is worthy of our compassion and empathy, not our scorn and ridicule. In addition to that, a lot of modern critics also point out that for a really big, tough guy, he-man, macho guy, 
there's a lot of sentimentality and kind of almost gushy, goofy romance in some of his works. And the work that they're most likely to, to attack for this purpose is A Farewell to Arms, Hemingway's most uh, successful novel. Um, they point to the... Um, what really I think today and, t and oftentimes reads is a fairly a very sappy relationship that develops between Catherine and um, and Henry in that uh, novel, and they they kind of use that as a as a, a way of saying Hemingway's not so tough. Hemingway's not really modern. He doesn't take a cold you know even eyed approach to romance. His dialogue, which is supposed to be what he's so famous for when he talks about love in this novel, is sappy and sentimental. And again, it almost feels like his critics are tearing him down for not living up to the image of Hemingway that they hate. If they hate the He-Man tough image of Hemingway, shouldn't they embrace the idea that Hemingway was a lot more of a romantic than he appeared to be? And again, I think the reason they don't, as again, I think the reason they don't, they don't accept that or, or extend empathy and compassion to Hemingway for this or for the possibility that Hemingway was gay is because they're using and what his image that he projected uh, to say that he's not worthy uh, of being empathized with or, or, or receiving compassion for that. To make matters worse for me, we also know a lot of things about Hemingway which should create a sense of compassion and empathy for Hemingway. Um, he suffered through a lot of very emotionally disturbing things and physically disturbing things that, you know, under ordinary circumstances, I think for most people in the United States of America today, and most historical figures would provoke empathy and compassion. Uh, first of all, his father committed suicide when he was a young man. This would be an emotional trauma for any young man. Uh, in all likelihood, his father suffered from depression, and I'm sure those characteristics were passed on to Hemingway. You know, it's entirely possible that Hemingway suffered from PTSD. Hemingway was a participant in World War I. He was wounded. A shell blew up near him and it wounded him, causing him severe pain and trauma. He was an ambulance driver on the Italian front and he no doubt witnessed the horrors, the horrors of modern war directly. And there's no reason not to believe that that didn't have an effect on his ideas and on his psyche. Also important to note, given what we now know about CTE and concussions, Hemingway suffered five severe concussions during his life. Uh, the last one occurred uh, in a severe plane crash, which almost killed him. You know, those kind of repeated head traumas do have a psychological, physical effect on people. There's also no doubt that Hemingway suffered from severe depression, and he treated that depression the worst way possible by drinking suicidal amounts uh, of alcohol. Generally speaking, people have empathy and compassion for people who suffer with depression. Uh, but not so much uh, for Hemingway, apparently. There's also the fact that he was no doubt aware and clearly aware of his own decline as a writer, which ordinarily, again, I think we would extend empathy and compassion for. And then finally, he was diagnosed near the end of his life with a medical condition, which was called uh, hemochromatosis, which means that a large amount of iron builds up in your blood. And guess what? That iron buildup in your blood system causes physical and psychological disorders. Now, none of those things, though none of those six things may excuse Hemingway from his bad behavior and from being a bad person, but I do think those are six very real things that happened in Hemingway's life, which at the very least should cause us to think that maybe there was some other cause for Hemingway's behavior, his actions, his ideas, other than just being a bastard. And maybe, just maybe, we might want to extend a little more compassion and empathy uh, to Hemingway for what he went through in his life. And think about that when we're evaluating Hemingway's life. And then more importantly, I think for my discussion, which will continue on in the next series of videos, Hemingway's work. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Let me know uh, what you thought about this discussion, what you think about Hemingway in general. Um, and I'll catch up with you in the next video.